Welcome to the GMBN Tech Show. This is the weekly show with all the information about the tech stuff you need to know about. And coming up on the show this week, we've got some really exciting stuff from YT Industries, all the locals, and news on the winning Bike Build Bike. Okay, so straight into tech news. And the most exciting thing this week in the news certainly has been the launch of the new YT Capra with the crazy goat video. I'm not sure if you've seen this video yet, but you must watch the video. Now, of course, Capra in Italian is near enough the word goat, and it's a mountain goat with a bike, and the same in Spanish, it's Cabra. That is where YT were going with the goat man, and he basically like kidnaps people and persuades you that you really need to be riding the Capra. But more on the actual bike. It's now available in 27 and a half inch wheel and 29 inch wheel, and there's a whole host of really, really cool stuff about this new platform from YT Industries. There's a slightly lower leverage ratio on this new bike, which means there's less pressure on the shock and it's gonna be more sensitive at the beginning part of the stroke. So a lot more active, a lot grippier, and a nicer feeling bike to ride. Now there's aluminium and carbon frame options, and the double XL sizes, which is a new size for YT Industries, really applicable to tall people like me or anyone over six foot. They've got 495 and 500 mil reach in both the 27.5 and 29 inch versions. So that's a really nice roomy bike. So you can be able to run tiny little stumpy stem on there for that real sort of responsive control. Now also something interesting is the 29 inch frame has been noted that it's safe to have twin crown forks on there. So does this mean we may see one of the YT mob racers like Aaron Gwynn riding a 29 inch wheel bike in a downhill race? at some point over the year. Don't get me wrong, this is not their downhill bike, but it may end up being a really suitable candidate for a World Cup race at one of the rounds. We shall see. Okay, so next up is coming from the UK this time, and this is a UK-born company from Sheffield called Kotick. Now, they've got a steel bike out at the moment, a brand new bike called the Flare Max. So the bike's running 120 mil travel out back, and you can run it from 120 mil up to 140 up front. Now the thing I really like about the bike, other than the drop link suspension platform on this, which is a single pivot with a linkage operated shock, is the fact, again, we're seeing a reach increase on the bikes. Now a lot of manufacturers are starting to do this. So something really cool about the Kotick bikes is they give specific sizing information for you guys. So if you wanna have your bike feeling a bit more like a traditional bike with shorter wheelbase, you can size down and size up on the stem because they've got longer range in the first place or you could simply buy the size that they recommend for your height, or even if you want to size up and go even more extreme, you could run something like the Percenti 20 mil stem that I showed you in Tech of the Week the other week. So it's really cool that they do this. Made in steel, handmade in the UK, really, really nice sort of platform there. Check them out. Okay, so next up is information coming in from Canada. So Rocky Mountain, not so much known on the race scene as much as they are for the free ride scene, they're just generally making really, really good bikes. They've got an EWS race team. They've hooked up with Race Face, which is a logical sort of link for them. So they're gonna be running the Race Face cranks, Race Face wheels, bar stems, all that sort of cool stuff on the bikes. Now they've got Jesse Melamed, Remy Galvin, and ALN racing those bikes. But the thing I found really interesting about the release when it came out was that they're not on their Enduro bike, which is a Slayer. In the release, they're actually on their sort of all mountain sort of bike, which they call it Aggressive Trail, and that's called the Instinct. The particular one they're riding is the BC edition. So again, it's not their Enduro race bike, it's their all mountain or their aggressive trail bike. It's 29 inch wheel and it's got 155 mil travel out back and 160 up front. Now I think I find interesting about this is the Rocky Mountain Slayer, which is their 27 and a half inch wheel bike. That thing is an absolute beast and it's a fairly new platform for Rocky Mountain to have. Makes me wonder why the team are choosing to run 29 over 27 and a half. I mean, we're seeing a 29 thing, it came out a few years ago and it's gonna have, having a bit of a resurgence again. I mean, I'm a big believer in 29 inch wheels, but they are certainly not for everyone. In this case, the whole Rocky Mountain Race Face team, they're settling on the 29 inch wheels, but will we see them running the Slayer with the 27 and a half inch wheels through the year? Time will tell. TRP brakes are certainly making waves on the gravity scene at the moment. When Aaron Gwynn signed for YT Bikes back in 2016, not only was the bike not a proven bike on the race scene, but also a whole bunch of the other brand sponsors that he had on board, like the TRP Brakes, were also not proven. So it was a very bold move to go out there. He went straight out and started winning World Cups from the off, and people started paying attention. 
but the TRP brakes actually look fantastic and they're very, very powerful. They've got a quad pot design, so especially four pistons in them. The quadium brake is the one that everyone talks about. It's got heat fins built onto the brakes. And now for 2018, there's a lot of riders suddenly riding them. So I think we're gonna see a lot of interesting things coming from TRP. Now, of course, there's Gwyn and the YT Mob all running those. Then there's Brendan Fairclough and the Scott Velo Solutions team. So you're gonna see a lot of that stuff popping up on Rebel TV for like the course rides and stuff like that, the UCI World Cups. The Common Cell Downhill team, they're all gonna be running them. And of course, there's Cedric Grassi, one of the biggest personalities in mountain biking. Matt Jones, the UK Red Bull free rider. And of course, Remy Metallier, who's quite famous for just being like Whistler Bike Park hero, basically. So it's a lot of people suddenly running the TRP brakes, and I've got to set Winger way over here soon. So we're going to take a bit of a closer look at those. And I think we're also going to have a look at how to bleed them and set them up, because as their popularity gains, more people need to know this sort of stuff. Next up is that the Santa Cruz Syndicate are no longer running Envy wheels or Envy bars and stems. Now we do know that it's not necessarily new in terms of tech news. We know that they're going to run the Santa Cruz Reserve own brand wheels that Minar has been spotted doing some testing on. But what is new is the fact that they're going to be running the Bergtech bars and stems. Now the Bergtech stuff is manufactured in the UK. It's all CNC machines. It's really high tech, nicely made stuff. That's really nice that we're going to be seeing that stuff on Loris Verge's bike and Greg Minard's bike. And also I saw on Instagram stories that Josh Bryceland has just taken delivery of some new Bergtech stuff. Now of course in addition to the bars and stems, Bergtech make the penthouse flat pedals which are one of the more popular aftermarket pedals that you can get out there. But also when looking into this, I noticed that Greg Minard posted up a picture. It looked like it might have been in South Africa. I'm not quite sure where the picture was. But they were shooting for Maxis for a Maxis product launch. Now we do know that Greg had been testing a lot of different 29 inch wheel tires over the last race season. And there's a new tire, which is, Greg's quite famous for having like the DHR2 tire. So the new tire that we've seen on Greg's bike over the last couple of years in development, could this be the, the launch of that tire? Really hope so, because the DHR2 is a damn good tire. So time will tell and we'll find that out and we should have images of what that new tire is that Max is launching any day now. Okay, so now I'm gonna have a look at some of the comments that came in from last week's show. Guys, your comments are just, I love them. There's so many of them. There's a lot of detailed stuff they're picking up on as well. So please keep those comments coming in. You can add them in the comments below or you can email them directly to us if you want. And of course you can get them to us via Facebook. So first up, we're gonna look at Big Nicoli. For carrying tools without a backpack and not strapping your kit to a bike, you could borrow the idea from roadies and use a water bottle or a tool pot that fits in a bottle cage. Or Topeak have the Ninja range. Yeah, the Topeak Ninja stuff's really good. Um, on my hardtail, I've got a Topeak Ninja bottle cage. It's got the multi-tool stashed inside that. That's really good. And of course, what you're mentioning, what roadies do, they basically cut the top off a bottle and they stuff a load of stuff in it like an inner tube and that. But something that does exist on the market, now there's a company called Fabric and they make a product called the Tool Keg. And it's very similar to the cageless bottle. So it mounts using these little bungs that go in place of your bottle cage bolts and things you don't need a cage. The, the device just clicks straight on. Now the keg is essentially just like a cut-off bottle except it's got a lid and on the inside it has a neoprene sleeve that goes in there. So you can stuff an inner tube, some CO2 cartridges, a chain tool, all that sort of stuff. Screw the lid on, it won't vibrate or bang around. And because of the nature of those bungs that go onto the frame, you can screw them on, bulge them out a bit and this thing will not move. It's a really useful thing to put on a bike, especially if you've got a bike that's got bottle cage mounts that are like underneath the frame, so you can really make use of that space where you don't really wanna have a bottle there like with mud and dust being sprayed up at it. And it does mean you can ride, of course, without carrying all that stuff in a bag. You can keep it on the bike, it's there at all times. So yeah, there's plenty of cool ways of doing that stuff. Don't know how I feel about this one from Tommy KG. Spengel wheels are the ugliest thing I've ever seen on a bike for some time. Well, you know, bikes are personal preference, you know, each to their own and all that. Yeah, and I think maybe everyone has a bit of a knee-jerk reaction when someone comes out with something that sort of goes against the grain somewhat. What do the rest of you guys think? Do you like that sort of look? Do you want to keep it conventional with spoked wheels? Let's find out. Hit us up in the comments. And the last one is quite a cool question, actually. This is from Ricky Marak. Um, what is the book you have there at the back? Well, there's a few books here, actually. So this one is... a. Uh, the Mountain Biking Handbook by Barry Ricketts. And this one, it says inside, to Andrew, have a lovely, I can't even read the writing, something birthday, love mum and dad, 1991. That's how long I've had that book. That's an absolutely ancient cycling book. It's mostly black and white in there. That's what mountain bike racing used to look like when I started. Bad, isn't it? And then there's 
This beauty, I actually stole this one from John Cannings of GCN Tech because I just didn't think it belonged on his set. And then this one is an absolute classic from the late William Neely. This is just called Mountain Bike. I can't recommend this enough. You can still get this on Amazon. Uh, it's about $15, about 15 quid in the UK. It's all animated stuff and it's actually totally relevant. Everything in here, it's so old and the styling of the bikes in here is old, but it's such good stuff. Literally can't recommend it enough. Get hold of that and that will make you a better rider. And then the other ones, as you can see, there's a kayaking book, which is very random, but it's also by William Neely and another Ultimate Mountain Bike book. I'm a sucker for books, what can I say? Okay, so we're back in the bike cave again, and we've got none other than Mr. Martin Ashton with us. Because yeah. he loved it so much last I time. I did, I loved it last week. Um, I can't wait to see some more garages and caves. Um, oh, yes. It's strangely uh, captivating, isn't it? We have got some bangers this week as Let's well. Let's do it. Let's yeah. Do it. Right, so straight in. The first one is from Andreas Lofberg in Sweden. Nice. So he's got a pretty good setup. Lots very, of sort of plastic trays. Very organised. Very organised. I definitely approve of that. Yeah, yeah. Even got clothing rack. Clothing corner. Yeah. Nice. And here we go, the bike set up there. Is that specialised down the back there? A bike for every yeah. person. Got your 90 degrees. Yeah, angle I mean, going the on. 90 degrees is the rule on the tools, everyone. Mm. I mean, if, if they're not 90 degrees, then something's it's gone nothing. wrong. Yeah, yeah, something's gone wrong. Next up from Anthony M. My bike stable work in progress has most of mine and my fiance's bikes in it. Let's have a look. And, and you've a got a dog. Yes. <laughs> this looks like your garage. It's sort of like mid, you know, Lots near, going nearly on. finished. It looks a bit better condition than mine. It's a lot of bikes. It is, yeah. Oh, yes. Beach cruisers, yeah. Beach cruisers. I quite, quite fancy a beach cruiser myself for summer. Yeah. I think just for you cruising around good. town. You look good on a beach cruiser. Oh, he's got one of those loud forks. They're so strange. I don't know if I like them or not, they but I'm really my, interested they in They hurt my brain. They hurt my brain, oh, but in a good way. Wow. That's a neat proof for those tambles on. That is nice. Uh, but this isn't a very organised... This is just like... A, a room full of stuff. This is a store. This is a bike store. I like it, but he did say work in progress. That's true. That's so, true. Yeah. more importantly... I'm not judging. I'm not it's judging. It's full of bikes. I'm not judging. It's, so, it's, we're good. I liked all of the bikes. Okay, so on to Zarsky. Um, I just want to send you my bike cave. It's not like the others. You show weekly in GMBN Tech because I live in Prague uh, on the fifth floor with no elevator. So no shed, <laughs> oh God, no I garage, no cellar or anything. Just my apartment. Picture's about a year old. I'm going to build up my console Should we guess, on my Is own. it going to be on the balcony? Let's have a look. No. Oh, no. It's no. Ba basically, the apartment is a bike cave. Yeah. Yeah, it's just I'm into let it take over. There's no sign of any sort of normal living apparatus in there, is there? Priorities <laughs> in check. Commissar and bits there hanging up. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. That's where it's down going. That's oh, dedicated. Topeak and I don't know what the other thing is. Looks like they bought some new stuff. It's dedication, that. Oh, yeah, that's good. I'd yeah. like to know where, what the living space is to bike cave. You know, what's the, the ratio? ratio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not looking good for living space. Oh, what would you need? You need a bed, don't you? Yeah. He yeah, has got everything you need in that. Look, there's some, there's some gin in the background and oh, a bottle of champagne. Oh, I like gin. Uh, yeah. Nice. That's okay. how I do it. Well um, done, Onda. Next up is Dan Abd from Wisconsin in the USA. Let's see what you've got, Dan. Oh, wow. My God. Wow. That's that incredible. has got everything in there. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, I deeply approve of your workbench set up there. I it's could, like old kitchen units recycled. I is. could sleep on that bench and look at them tools all night. Yeah, I think I'll join you to be fair. That'd, That'd be, be weird, mega. Dude. It That'd would be, be weird. weird. That'd be sleep weird. on the floor. Yeah, there's not space. Uh, we could figure it out, I'm sure. That's hey, he's got a lot of bikes. Just a great oh, look at little Ripper's bikes. Yeah, what about this? Hey, thing? Neil's got one of those. It's like a little specialised hot yeah, rocks on the little yeah, run on yeah. bike. And look at this um, venting up the top here. That is for Neil's kid, not for Neil. He is small, but he's not. That <laughs> yeah, Neil doesn't ride the balance bike. Can't yeah, he, um, what is that? It's like a vent, yeah, vent, vent ducting vent. or something. It's the sort of thing that Tom Cruise crawls along in Mission <laughs> Impossible. It's one of them. It might be in there. He's small enough to get in there. I oh, look at all those tools. He's got everything, all the brands as well. By the looks of it, he's got park in there. He's got his IMBA, is is, IMBA sticker in there. Nice. That's great. That's I. I think that's one of my favourites so far. I really Fully loaded. I really like that one. They're just all them tools. Oh man, I yeah. love tools. Got his priorities right. Well into that. Yeah, yeah. So next up, we've got Matt Rhodes from Cottonwood, California. Here's a photo of my bike cave stroke doghouse. Sometimes I get sent to doghouse and I really don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I wouldn't mind either. It's massive. You've got a nice big sofa. 
Well, it looks like uh, Sco that, Scooby's taking up the yeah, sofa at the moment. <laughs> that um, that is a serious space. It's huge, isn't it? It's basically a living room. It, I like how he's got his sofa positioned to just look at the bikes. It's like a reading <laughs> corner. It's just looking into the bikes. I, I love the doghouse corner. But he has got a Yeti look to just stare at. I'd sit there and stare at it. Yeah. Yeah, me too. That's a winner in a bike what fault, is, that one. What is it about that bike? It's I don't good. know, they just have something, oh, didn't they? good, yeah. Just on general principle, it's a Yeti, yeah, win. Yeah. Uh, next up is Clark Sutherland. So it looks like this one's a UK entry. Um, he's got his brand new Bird. Oh, I really like those bikes. They're super long, aren't they? Custom Lyric 170s. He's got Ooh, all his gear in there. Oh, yeah. I approve of the floor as well. Got like a rubber work floor there. Oh, yeah. Nice big roll cab in the back. Oh. Yeah. Bit of a serious motor going on there. Is that Lotus? It's like Corvette, isn't it, or something? I thought it was Lotus. It, it might be. Yeah. Could be a Lotus, yeah, actually. Beamer yeah, as well. Yeah. Yeah, it is a Lotus. Yeah, it's an exige. Yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, he's got one of those Topi prep stands. Um, prep stations. Yeah. That's like on wheels. You need that for the back of your van, mate. That's what I was just That's thinking. That's the exact I was, one I was that looking you need. at that, yeah. Because yeah. I've got a van that I'm turning into my bike cave because yeah. I haven't got a bike cave space. So uh, I'm turning my van into my bike cave. I'm going to get you one of them. That's that what you want. Cool. They, they all swivel out. Oh. oh, it's like the coolest little setup. That would be perfect. Yeah, I have to get perfect. myself on. Look at that screen. Oh. That bird bike, then, that, that reminds me a little bit of the Nikolai's. Yeah, yeah. they are, yeah. Quite yeah, progressive so. geometry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Long front end, like but also the, comparatively long back end on them. The Geometron type thing. Yeah. That's right, yeah, G16s. Yeah. And there we go. Boom. Oh. I, I honestly, was, I could stay in that little space for a long time. That was good, isn't it? I, yeah. I was holding back as well, because you've had way more. Yeah. I just didn't realise how long we were going to be going for that. Yeah, so that's great. That plenty great. more to come next week on the show, but keep them coming in, because we love checking that stuff out. Fire them into the usual address, tag us, Facebook, Instagram, all the usual stuff, and we'll see you next week in Bike Cave. Can I come again? Oh, yeah. yeah. Martin just won't go away. Oh, he's here again for Rewind. <laughs> this is brilliant. Oh, so so this is, fun. This is our retro bit of the show. Yet again, I've got Retro Meister, Mr. Ashton here with me. I've always, I've always old. Old, yeah. <laughs> old Metro, yeah. And uh, we're going to start going through some of your entries. So we've got some amazing ones. First up is Adam Bradley from Cheshire. And this is 2003 Orange Missile. Oh, Have a look what? at this bad boy. Do you remember these? Man, do I remember you one? Used I, have one didn't I, you? I had yeah. one. Oh, I love this bike. Yeah, the first thing I see on it really pleased yeah. me. Remember those old school MRP chain guys? Yeah. They're nice, yeah. but he's got the black rollers on there. And to get those black rollers, they only came on the carbon one. Wow. They, these ones normally came on the, sorry, the silver they plates. They would normally have the have been orange like orange. Yeah, 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 yeah. To get the black ones, you have to have the carbon chain guide. So he's, oh, like, he's either got a hold of those separately or must have had the carbon I one. wanted this bike so much because Steve Gill rode one. Yeah. Um, and Peter Krauss rode one for ages. Oh my god, I forgot about He's him. Famous trials rider, Red Bull athlete. Uh, still is Red Bull athlete. Yeah. Great, amazing bike rider. And uh, yeah, I had one with 24 inch wheels in. Yeah, yeah. so this one's 26. But yeah. still, it looks small though, doesn't it, still? Yeah. By today's yeah. bikes. Great you know, it's bike. got the saddle that counts as well. Yeah. What did you say last week? You wouldn't, you wouldn't know one if you didn't yeah. have one of those. Yeah, if you didn't have a Tioga stripe down your yeah. seat, well, you are a mug. <laughs> and next up is Simon Lockwood from New Zealand. It's his first mountain bike he's had. He's had it since new, since 1985, a Jamis <laughs> Dakota. Jamis, he's, wow. He's recently had it powder coated and given it a bit of love. Oh, but check this goodness. out. Look oh. at the top tube goes the opposite way. That's how old it is. That's just, I can't swear in this bit oh, of your show. What are those brakes? They look like um, IRD racing or whatever they're called. I've forgotten what they are. I need, I need another look at those. That is so cool. That's yeah, look so at those because cool. they've got the cam on them. The stem. And it pulls the cable pulls a little plate up. Look at that stem going. The oh. cable's going up through it. Wow. That is a work. What is that stem? I don't know. I've, I don't recognise the stem. See, you know what, right? Mountain bike. The technology in mountain biking is incredible, right? But has it got better than that? I don't know if it has. I don't know. If... I don't know if it has. Well, that stem looks like a lot of downhill stems from that today. Looks isn't it? rad. <laughs> I want to go down a hill on that. Don't and... you? I like. Well, actually, I want to go down a dusty track and do a big skid on that bike. That's about all you'd want to do on it, though, because I did <laughs> ride a, a retro bike. Not quite as old as that, but I rode one recently. And it was better as a memory, I think. You know, I love the tech <laughs> in them, but, but it was frankly terrifying to ride because the front ends are so low on them compared yeah, to today's bikes. Yeah. And, but I was just wondering, it looks like... I can't tell if the um, chain rings are overlaced or not. Remember, Shimano had the Biopace rings. 
yeah. those egg rings and stuff yeah, back then. Yeah, yeah. They, they've kind of done a full circle and come back. Remember Rowling had them on mm. their team bikes, yeah. Okay, so next up is from Phil Johnson. He's mountain bike to the court and he's been racing since 1986. Wow. He wanted to send us a retro shot of his racing days on his trusty 1990 Klein Attitude. He used to climb like a mountain goat with a rocket up his ass, apparently. Yeah. Bullseye custom hubs laced on Mavic 217s, Shimano XT group set, Synchros Post, Panorama Smoke and Darts, ring laid titanium components. Oh, the BLT. I remember the BLT lights. That's yeah. not a sandwich, that is a set of lights now. Those massive like lead acid batteries that you put in your bottle cage. Yeah, yeah. And that wow. is rad. That is an incredible looking bike. Look at those handlebars though. Look how narrow they are. <sighs> Scary. It was real, like every, everyone had them. You needed yeah. arms as big as Phil to be able to do that. Bit of a unit, isn't he? He is, isn't yeah. he? He looks fast. Look how small the bike looks there. Yeah. Do you know what that looks? What was so great about those bikes at the time that I thought was that sloping top tube was yeah. actually, there was the Klein, there was a few of the smaller Cannondales that and had it. Some Rocky Mountains. Rocky Mountains, yeah. and it just made them look so, like so aggressive, much more aggressive. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. They they were they were beautiful. I think they, they were about 20 pounds in weight when they first came out. It was yeah. like the lightest production mountain bike you could buy. Just a quick one, on those handlebars, I remember having 18 inch handlebars back in the day. <laughs> and the day cut them down and they were so narrow that you had to have your brake lever one higher than the other. So the <laughs> brake cables couldn't catch. That was um, horrible. And I remember like everyone else had short bars, like you had to have short bars. Yeah, this was yeah. with bar ends as well. I think I had like little ski bends on mine. <laughs> and I remember when my dad cut them down for me, I was too young to use an axle back then, he asked me how they felt, and I remember yeah. riding a bike thinking, this is just the worst thing ever. And I was like, oh. yeah, these are amazing, Dad. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. I'm glad yeah. we did it. Yeah, that was too short. And one last one, we've got Paul Matthews. Uh, so firstly, he's got a couple of shots of his bike cave with uh, his own bikes in there, and his oh, son's yeah. sort of Kona Fire Mountain. Which of course, Fire Mountain is way back in the day. They were one of the early oh. aggressive mountain bikes yeah, with yeah. the sloping top tubes. Yeah. But, the, right but the, real, the real shot that you want to see is... This one here. Him <laughs> riding the British Open in 1993 in the Cheviot Hills, which he won, which is a nice oh, little thing. Pace. Pace rigid fork on there. Oh, Man, yeah. that's just beautiful. It's not a Pace, it's a, is it a Rally, the frame? Um, yeah, it's a Dynatech, so that's yeah. a Metal Matrix composite frame. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they were really, that's when I had that special products division. And Rally yeah. was like a super premium brand. Yeah, yeah, you can see the old, what was it, a Griffin on the front, the old Rally? Logo. Yeah, something like something that, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Classic. Someone, out, someone out there will know. Yeah. I think it was a Griffin. So yeah, uh, Richie Logic brakes, so they were basically made by Dicomp. Yeah. So they were like 985 and 986s. 985 right. and 986s. Uh, the same with the brake levers. And another retro tip, I noticed he's got one of the very early Camelbacks on his back because they didn't have any sort of proper sternum strap or waist yeah. strap. Yeah. They just had the tiny little thin shoulder straps. You used to dig in if you overfilled yeah. your Camelback. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you couldn't but, move your shoulders because like the blood had cut them off. I once sold one of those at a car boot sale. And I hadn't cleaned it, and I had no intention of cleaning it because it was a bit mouldy. Oh, you know what? One rule in life, right? Don't buy second-hand <laughs> camelbacks. I, I feel terrible, but before I'd had a chance to tell the guy I hadn't cleaned it, the guy had already paid me some money and walked off. <laughs> the first question, though, you'd pick it up and think, who's been sucking this? Yeah, and what have they got? <laughs> <laughs> what did they have in it? I think that's enough of that. That's enough of that. So that's enough of yeah. bike, uh, Rewind for this week. Thank you guys for sending me in. Like, absolutely love reminiscing about the old days, so. I love stuff. it in here. Yeah. Oh, you, you get to do some good stuff on MG, uh, GMV and Tech. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna it's fun, it, isn't it? Isn't it? I think, I think it's one of the best channels at the moment. I think it's pretty it's good. definitely doing very well. It is. Okay, so now it's time for Top Mods. Yet again, you guys have been really, really impressing me by sending in modifications of all sorts of levels. So no matter what you're doing to your bike, send the stuff in. I wanna see it and wanna help you guys with this stuff. So first up is from George Thayer. His bike has been freshly painted and serviced by his bike shop. He made the frame himself. Now like, check this out, this is so nice. So it's brazed together, so fillet brazing. That's like, one of the nicest forms of putting a bike together from Columbus tubing. So that is just, as far as I'm concerned. He's done it in a clear powder coat so you can see all the joints. And he says, PS, 26 ain't dead. Yeah, yeah, good shout. There's enough 26 inch stuff out there for two lifetimes. So yeah, by, by all accounts, it certainly is not dead. And I've also got a custom 26 inch wheel frame at home, so I'm with you on that. Next up is from Brandon Gissinger. Hey guys, here's my submission. I've got a Pivot Max 6 that I made bar spinnable. I had to route the front brake through the steerage tube and the dropper post lever on the same side as the shifter. It's one of my favourite mods, and I'd love to see more people doing this. Now you've got to check this video clip out. This is so good. Check this, it's on the screen now. 
This guy is a ripper. I think we might get in touch with you about doing some more stuff, Brandon. That's one of the coolest mods I've seen. Pretty rare for someone to do that on a sort of a regular sort of trail bike. Next up is from Gary Nichols. His Pivot 429 modifications, 29 inch front wheel and 27 and a half back. Well, look at that. So Gary's doing what someone asked about earlier this show. Out back, he's got a Ibis 742 ultra, ultra wide rear wheel. I've got a set of those actually, they're really good. Uh, 30 mil stem, 17 mil spacer between a head tube and a fork. Shimano 11 by 46 and there's various hacks all the way through it. And he also says he's 65 years old, full disabled vet. Oh yeah, and he shreds. <laughs> yes, Gary, that is like exactly what you love hearing. Drop us a line, Gary. I'd love to know what you think about the 29 inch front wheel and the 27 and a half inch back. Uh, just let us know what your feedback is on that so we can help share that to other people. Next one is from Renzo Castro. Here's two of my favorite mods to my 2014 Specialized Enduro 29er S-Works. So up front, he's put a absolute black 30 tooth oval chainring on there, which has been a significant improvement for reducing fatigue on long climbs, he says. And he says it helps him put out power in a way that feels more natural. Yeah, we're gonna be taking a look at oval chain rings and exactly how it can do that and why and how it works very soon because they're actually a really good bit of tech, especially if you like running flat pedals. There's some really good advantages to using them there. Next up, he's got some Pedaling Innovations Catalyst pedals. He was already on flats before this, but the difference these make when standing up is so impressive. Yeah, do you know what? They're a really, really good pedal. And it just goes to show that if you do spend a bit of cash in certain places on your bike, you can really tailor the feel to the way you run ride. So that is bang on. Last up is from Dayton Nesselbush. I had a Yari fork on my Specialized Enduro, but as I'm in college and I don't have the money to spend on a new Lyric, I thought I'd turn it into one internally. My solution has been to buy the Charger 2 upgrade kit, that's the damping unit from a Lyric, and a Vorsprung Luftkappe, which basically gave me a tricked out Lyric. I've got red and black theme going on, so I purchased matching red decals. Yes, do you know what? That is the perfect example of how a top mod can work. You started off with a fairly basic fork chassis, you've upgraded it and it performs as good, if not better, than the better model. So that is an absolutely fantastic one. Guys, you're absolutely killing it with these top mods. Please keep them coming in. Love seeing them. So much variety. See you next week. So Tech of the Week this week isn't really a new outstanding product as such, but it's a rolling improvement to one that already exists. And I love it when companies do this because they've been really proactive to how consumers use products. Now the E13 cassette, I've talked about this quite a lot recently. Now I've already explained to you how it goes onto the bike. It slots onto the XT driver and has a specific lock ring that comes with the cassette and you use a specific tool that comes with the cassette as well. And to put that tool on, you need a whacking great adjustable spanner or a Shimano external compatible BB tool. Now, all on well, but it is a little bit fiddly to get it on. It's all a little bit close in there together. Like it works for the purpose of getting it onto your bike, but it's not the best solution. Now the guys at E13 have addressed this and they've got this brand new design now and it's got a pinch bolt collar that's part of the cassette. So now you simply slide the cassette onto the hub, tighten the pinch bolt to four newton meters, Bob's your uncle. Absolutely love it. And I love it when companies pay attention to a great product but they constantly want to improve it. So that's a rolling improvement and all the cassettes you'll see in the shops that are new from now will have that. Of course, it's the same cassette that YT is specking on their Jeffsies and their Capra range. So other people are taking notice of the smaller companies doing things like this. And I'm thinking that maybe I'll have one of these on the bike build. What do you reckon? Okay, so now it's time for the bike build reveal. So you guys have been voting like crazy over the last week. 4,666 of you commented and voted. And these are the results. So with a whopping 1,026 votes, it is not what I thought it was going to be. It's a Santa Cruz Alloy Nomad. That is the winning frame. So that's the frame I'm gonna be building up. The rest of the results are on the screen now, so you can see the amount of votes for each bike brand out there. All really surprising, actually, is some massive like, amounts in there. Canyon up there with 632 votes. Like, where did that come from? Amazing. A little bit disappointed with like Propane, for example, 287 votes, yet in the comments initially, so many of you were talking about the Propane Tai or Mountain but maybe I'll build that one another time. Anyhow, I'm gonna get the frame in, it might take a while to get here from the States, and then we're gonna figure out all the stuff I'm gonna put on there. 
Now, this is a sort of a money saving operation. I'm not gonna just try and build the cheapest possible bike out of it because it's a, a decent quality frame. But what I am gonna do is show you how to be smart with where you spend your money. And also a few little tips and tricks in getting that stuff set up. Okay, so that is the end of this week's GMBN Tech Show. Hope you guys loved it. Of course, I love this stuff. I love geeking out with all of you about mountain bike tech. So for a couple of cool mountain bike tech related videos, in response to the DI2 video that Neil did recently, he's done a Q&A with all the questions that you guys were writing in the comments. So check that out, that's a really good extensive video there. And a bit more of a useful one for you guys, if you wanna find out how to repair a tire slash, in particular a tire slash and a sidewall on a tubeless tire, click up here and you can see me getting my knitting on. So as always, if you like the channel, make sure you subscribe, please subscribe because you want this channel to get massive and we can give you better and better content all the time. And of course, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up.